All right. Let's move on to item number 21. In a group of 60 people, 28 like Coke and 37 like Sprite, and each person likes at least one of the two drinks. How many like both drinks? Four, five, seven, or nine? So the, since the total number of people is 60, so 60 here is the union. And if you are asking how many like both drinks, this is like the intersection. And we have to remember in our set theory that if you have the cardinality of the union of two sets, it's equal to the cardinality of the first set plus cardinality of the second set minus the cardinality of their intersection. When we speak about cardinality, like what, how many are there in that particular set? But for our case, we will be needing the cardinality of A intersection B. Hence, I will add both sides by the cardinality of A intersection B. So, or this negative will become positive on the left-hand side. And I will subtract this one, both sides. So it will become minus in the right-hand side. And with such, you could actually derive the formula, the cardinality of A intersection B equals the sum of the cardinalities of A and B subtracted by the cardinalities of their union. So in our uh, take note, so A here stands for the cardinality of those who like Coke and B is for those who like Sprite. So by substitution, we have now 28 plus 37 minus 60, and that is five. So if you answered B, great job. So there are five people who like Coke and Sprite. Next number. Which of the following is true? One, all rational numbers are integers. Two, some irrational numbers are real numbers. All irrational numbers are integers. Some natural numbers are rational numbers. One and three, four, one and four, or none is true. Let's analyze each statement. All rational numbers are integers. This is false. How come it's false? It is because it should be some. Rational numbers are integers. Example, one half. One half is rational but it is not an integer. So one is false. It should be some rational numbers are integers. How about for the second one? Some irrational numbers are real numbers. This is false as well. How come? It should be all irrational numbers are real numbers. For the third one, all irrational numbers are integers. This is also false. In fact, there is no such thing as an irrational number that is an integer. Integers are rational numbers. And, the, and irrational numbers and rational numbers have no intersection. So three is false. So there's no commonalities in them, in fact. And for four, some natural numbers are rational numbers. This is again false. In fact, it should be all natural numbers. So none of these statements is true. Hence, the correct answer is letter D. I hope you got it. 23. What kind of relation is exhibited by the ordered pairs? 2, 4, 1, 5, 5, 1, negative 2, 14. Is it one to one, many to one, one to many, or all of the above? And in this case, we will go with what? You could see that among the ordered pairs, no, there's no ordered pair that's repeated. Okay. And if you check at their abscissas or the x coordinates to one, five, negative two, they are all distinct from one another. And this tells us that 
this is a one-to-one -one relation. And therefore, the correct answer is letter A. Okay, 24. A submarine is situated 300 feet below sea level. If it descends 150 feet, what is its new position? What do you think? 450 feet below sea level, 150 feet below sea level, 450 feet above sea level, or 150 feet above sea level. So the fact that the submarine is already situated below sea level, it should be represented by a negative number. If it's above, then positive. So we have the 300, negative 300 here. And since you will still descend, when we say descend, you will go down further. So going down further entails that a negative sign. So minus 150, and that's negative 450. So therefore, your new, your new location will be negative 450. And a negative sign tells you that it is below sea level. Hence, it's 450 feet below sea level, letter A. Okay, 25. Which of the following is true of the sum of a positive and a negative number? Always positive, always negative, could be positive or negative, or cannot be determined. So which of these do you think? It's actually letter C. How come letter C? Because the sign of the number is, uh, could be positive or negative. It actually depends on the absolute values of the numbers involved. It also depends on the signs. If the sign of the number with a greater absolute value is negative, then the answer is negative. But if the sign of the greater number of the number with a greater absolute value is positive, then it is also positive. However, if their signs, um, I mean, if they have the same all up. If they, if they have the same absolute value and they have um, opposite signs, so it could be zero as well. So we will go with letter C. That's the best answer here. Next number. If 9 raised to x is equal to 27, what is x? So 1.5, 2.5, or 3? So here, it's an example of what we call exponential uh, equation. So if we copy the given first, we could actually see that 3 is a common uh, base of 9 and 27. In fact, we could represent 9 as 3 squared, but I just immediately took out the 2. And 27 as 3 cubed. And in this case, you could see that um, how come I multiply them? Because if you are raising a power to another power, you multiply their exponents, right? So 3 raised to 2x is equal to 3 cubed. And since these two expressions are equal, they have the same base, and they are equal, then this tells us that their exponents have to be equal as well. So equating 2x equals 3, then dividing both sides by 2, you have x equals 1 and a half or 1.5 or 3 halves. Letter A. Okay. Next one. Let's proceed to number 27. What is the remainder when f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus x is divided by x minus 1. Is it 1, 2, 3, or 4? From here, we will utilize the remainder theorem. Uh, that is, if you divide by a linear binomial divisor with a leading coefficient of 1 here, 
what you can do is equate this divisor to zero and solving x minus one equals zero, you have x equals one. And what you will do next is if you let this as your f of x, you will solve for f of one. You will substitute it here. So that becomes f of one equals two times one cubed plus three times one squared minus uh, one. I forgot to substitute it there. So yeah. And so with such, you have two plus three minus one, that's five minus one or simply four. Letter D is the correct answer. I hope you understood it. 28. Twice a number subtracted from seven is at most 31. What is the number? Is it X greater than or equal to negative 12? X is greater than 12. X is less than or equal to 12. Or X less than negative 12. What do you think? We have to understand what is meant when we say at most. Remember in algebra, when we say at most, then the certain value should not exceed that number. So twice a number subtracted from 7 should not exceed 31. So if x is the number, then this implies that 7 minus 2x is less than or equal to 31. And adding both sides by negative 7, we have negative 2x is less than or equal to 24. And dividing both sides by negative 2. Remember, if you divide by a negative, if you divide or multiply by a negative number both sides, then you should reverse the sign of the inequality. So that becomes negative 2x divided by negative 2, so that's x. 24 divided by negative 2, that's negative 12. And the less than or equal to sign should become greater than or equal to. If you answered letter A, great job. 29. What is the reciprocal? Uh, what is the reciprocal of the sum of 0 0.5 and 0 0.4? Is it 9, 9 tenths, 10 over 9, or 100 over 9? When we say reciprocal of the sum, you have to do the sum first. And after getting the sum, you will take the reciprocal of that sum. So let's add the 0.5 and 0.4 first. And that gives you a sum of 0.9 which when written in fraction form is 9 over 10. And if it's 9 over 10 now, then the reciprocal of that could be achieved by interchanging the positions of your numerator and denominator, and thus the reciprocal of 9 tenths is 10 over 9, letter C. 30. The square root of thrice a number is 6. What is the square of the number? Is it 12, 24, 144, or 196? From here, if you get, if you meant to say, uh, I mean, if you have the square root of thrice a number, if you let x be the number, then thrice of it will be 3x. So if you, you will take the square root of 3x, and that's six according to the problem. So to remove the radical, the radical sign here, it's important to square both sides. So squaring both sides of the equation gives three x equals six squared, which is thirty six. Dividing both sides by three, you have x equals twelve. So the number actually is twelve. And if you square that number. That means x squared or 12 times 12 is equal to 144. Letter C is the correct answer. All right.